Hello guys, welcome back to Briar's Tales, Last Adventures. This is number 25, this is. Uh, Integral Trees. Interesting. So this is on a planet called Ivor Scott, uh, where a lot of research and, bi and biology on plant life is being taken place, actually. Uh, it's named after the founding sci scientist, Ivor and Scott. Uh, last name, well, that, those are last names, they're surnames. We don't know what the first names really are, actually. Uh, it's called Ivor and Scott. They've basically been, uh, went on this planet, found loads of life, cataloging stuff, examining new life, and continues, and it obviously continues more so with new facilities, and just people coming over and, you know, just like, obs observing, being teached, you know, and that sort of thing, like, y you know, if you want to learn something about botany, you know, go to this planet, and you'll be well and truly be taught about every single bit in a different way. Not of Earth, really, but more so on different plant life and different galaxies, really, in that sort of way. Uh, so, obviously that happens. Uh, one thing they found recently was a pod, like a small sphere-like pod. But the, kept, but the main professionals, the scientists, really uh, put it in a box and locked it with chains, makes it very secure, um, because they found out something that's very is very dangerous. And it's also like well, there's one of those that actually f takes on a host. So they end up locking it in chains and leaving it in a classroom of all things. And these botany students come over. They're very naive teenagers. But teenagers very much you know they're very sort of arrogant bastards really to be honest. And they basically you know they they basically come in and basically you know they find this thing whatever it you know whatever it is it hasn't had a name yet really and they decide to open it there's no alarm system or anything like that they just they pick the lock with hairpins you know and just open it up actually and sort of hold it and examine it really more so then the, then the tendrils pop out and it impales most a couple of the students I think about four students getting paled with tendrils out of this weird, weird weed ball or whatever you call it, and just stabs them through the through the chest, and they basically just die. Really, to be honest, the other students escape and everything else is you know, and they basically think you know there's something some, there's something in the classroom that's sort of escaping, and in doing so, uh, the pod itself starts moving and it's injecting or pumping in something like it's um, in it, in the four people in the four hosts really uh, there's four t four students those damn naive botanist students and basically turns into like weird plant humanoid things basically like um, think of a person like a, a skinless person showing the muscles and stuff like that a bit like that but with plants and just like you know air, like the blood has been re replaced with like fluids and also flowers and everything else and you know one of real like so like really greedy me everything else and basically just you know run amok really start screaming because they're in pain uh because there's, there's still a bit of human left in them of course but they're screaming they're screaming pain that's the you know, only that's the only sort of source from Uh, from the from the humans, really, to be honest. So, and basically, the run amok, they start, act, you know, the you know, obviously start screaming in pain, really, and also they just they basically end up um, catching people, really, but it also affects them, really. Like if you touch them, it'll get into the, it'll somehow little bits get into the into the skin, and basically end up going through. The veins, the body, everything else, and sort of thing, and they come he heavily affected. But also, but they come sedated really first. It's like they slowly power down and they collapse. They do, indeed. And this, well, these ones in particular, they sort of walk, like they still got, they like got grass, for, like the veins of them, all around have turned green. And you can really see it, and you can definitely, and they're sort of like they're kind of like docile zombies, really. Anyway. Like, what are they for, really? You know, who knows? We never really know about that, actually. It's just like they sort of become like foot soldiers to these people, which, which these are known as 
visual, was it Vesiopians, Vesiopians they're known as, which actually is a dangerous plant life that has been extinct, actually. Uh, it been wiped out due to its nature, of course, and also the host, because it kept infecting people, it kept infecting multiple planets. And the last one survived for some strange reason, like it was buried or something. I think it was actually way buried near to, the, near to that planet's core, really, because it had been there, really. Obviously, Ivor and, Scott, Ivor and Scott probably knew about it, although they might have probably been killed by it, whatever. And that sort of thing, because we never knew, we never knew how, what their demise, well, what they were, are they still alive, are they dead, what? What goes on there? It's never explained, really, in that regard. Um, so obviously, last adventures come. Indeed, they sort of get, they sort of come in like during, sort of like before the hosting process, really. Uh, but obviously, they take they take on you know what it, what it is really. You know, like trying to get rid of them. The only thing about the only thing to do do with the Vesiopin, the Vesiopins, of course, is to actually just commit a genocide, you know, make it the last thing ever, or kill the last thing ever, really. And use weed killer, chemicals, whatever, you know, certain little bits and pieces, of course, you know, stuff from a janitor's room, whatever. You know, it's like that, really. And, you know, there's the basic take on it, really. Um, obviously, you know, these, these poor people who are sort of screaming in pain, of course, have to die. So they have to really. Uh, not by them though. By the authorities, by the facilities, by, you know, the whole people behind the facility, of course, who are now running it, of course, they sort of have to be put on the line and do it actually, you know. They you know, the last images are running there to stun them, like not kill them at all, but the friends, teachers, whatever, lecturers, them so ones, they have to kill them for people, of course. Um, they're not too sure about the docile zombies, of course, why like, they might be lifted. I think, the, I think they're probably, set, they're probably, set, you know, in a conversation between Last Adventures and the Vesper forms, you know, let's like, say, what about those people? Of course, you know, they can live, you know. Once the possession, once, you know, if someone kills one of us, half of them sort of, you know, a chunk of them sort of get, you know, unpossessed, really. That sort of thing, uh, but die in a year's time. That sort of thing, you know. You know they've only, you know they're possessed, but they've only got a year to live. Really, after that. Uh, so it's a bit strange actually, like in that way, in that regard. So this story itself is another another newly written one, heavily inspired. The but you know it's like Seeds of Doom, Hot House, that sort of thing with the crinoid. No crinoid. Well, I didn't even bother using the crinoid. I use my own type of thing really. You know. The Vesiopians, really. Um, and Tangle Tease comes that comes from another sci fi book, a sci fi painting as well. So I thought, why not? Um, nothing else to say about this, unfortunately. So, in Tangle Trees, thank you guys for watching. As always, see you, ne see you for the next video, and goodbye.